مرحبا اهلا وسهلا Hi everyone, I'm June. Welcome to my channel. Today we'll be experiencing Egypt. Egypt is a country in Northeast Africa and is famous for its ancient monuments such as pyramids and sphinx. It is a large country, but a large portion of it is desert. Today, Egypt has about 90 million people, and 95% of Egypt's people live in areas around the coast of the Mediterranean Sea and along the Nile River. This includes the cities of Cairo, Alexandria, Aswan, and Port Said. So not many people live in the desert now. The capital of the Egypt is Cairo and the official language is Arabic. I've never been to this country but my parents went there several times so I will show you their travel photos too. My dad started Christian pilgrimage for Koreans in 1983 so he went to Egypt many times. This photo is from the year 1983. My dad visited the Egyptian Museum in Cairo which houses the world's largest collection of pharaonic antiquities. One of the best known works of art is exhibited here, the gold mask of Tutankhamun. The open-air museum of Memphis in Cairo looks also very interesting. The giant statue of Ramesses II is exhibited there. This is the Red Sea. In 1983, my dad went there with a Korean pilgrimage group. People were so happy to walk along the coast there. I saw these pictures and that's why riding a camel was in my bucket list until I did that in Israel in 2016. In 1984, my dad rode the camel for the first time and in 1989, he rode it with my mom. In the background, you can see the Great Pyramid of Giza. The Great Pyramid of Giza is the oldest of the seven wonders of the ancient world and the only one to remain largely intact. The pyramid was built as a tomb for the 4th dynasty Egyptian pharaoh Khufu around 2560 BC. The main part of the Giza complex is a set of buildings that included two mortuary temples in honor of Khufu, three smaller pyramids for Khufu's wives, an even smaller satellite pyramid, a raised causeway connecting the two temples, and small mastaba tombs for nobles surrounding the pyramid. The Sphinx was used to protect the pyramids of Giza. It is a mythological figure, which looks like a lion with a human head. In the legend of Oedipus, the Sphinx killed travelers who didn't have a correct answer to his riddle. The riddle was, which creature has one voice but travels on four legs in the morning, two in the afternoon, and three in the evening? Oedipus correctly solved it. Man he crawls on all fours as a baby, in adulthood he walks upright, and in old age, he walks with a cane. This is the Mount Sinai. In the Bible, Mount Sinai is the mountain at which the Ten Commandments were given to Moses by God. That's why it is traditionally known as Jabal Musa, which means Mount Moses. My parents did the Nile cruise tour in 2019. They stayed in a ship for one week and in a hotel for another week. And during these days, they had few excursions. They visited the Temple of Komombo, which is an unusual double temple in the town of Komombo. It was constructed between 180 and 47 BC. Later, some additions to it were made during the Roman period. Also, the Phyli Temple is so impressive. The temple complex of Phyli is built on an island in the Nile River. 
traveling around Egypt, you see a lot of hieroglyphs, but the ones at Faili are special because they are the last to be written by the ancient Egyptians. Every inch seems to be covered with hieroglyphs there. The oldest of the temples on the island was built by the last of the pharaohs, who was actually Egyptian. But his successor was Macedonian, part of the Ptolemaic dynasty. This new dynasty was clever enough to know that the leaders had to seem to be Egyptian to rule Egypt. So they dressed like Egyptians, worshipped the Egyptian gods, and built their monuments in the Egyptian style. That's why there are signs that much of the temple was built by the Greeks trying to impersonate the Egyptians. Later, while the Romans were ruling Egypt, the Roman emperors added few things. Augustus and Tiberius both added decorations and the emperor Hadrian added a gate to the complex. These are the Abu Simbel temples, which are two massive rock-cut temples at Abu Simbel. The twin temples were originally carved out of the mountainside in the 13th century BC during the reign of the pharaoh Ramesses II. These temples serve as a lasting monument to Ramesses II. He is also known as Ramesses the Great, who reigned between 1279 and 1213 BC. He is often regarded as the greatest, most celebrated, and most powerful pharaoh of the New Kingdom, itself the most powerful period of ancient Egypt. His wife, Nefertari, and children can be seen in smaller figures by his feet because they were considered to be less important and were not given the same position of scale. On the wall of Abu Simba, a fighting scene of Ramesses II on chariot was graved. And on this vase, you can see the same scene in colors. The complex had to be relocated in its entirety in 1968 on an artificial hill made from a dome structure because they would have been submerged during the creation of Lake Nasser. The Karnak Temple Complex is a huge mix of decayed temples, chapels, pylons, and other buildings near Luxor. The difference between Karnak and most of the other temples and sites in Egypt is the length of time over which it was developed and used. Approximately 30 pharaohs contributed to the buildings, enabling it to reach a size and diversity not seen elsewhere. My parents spent a week in Hurghada and enjoyed the beautiful beach and the nice weather there. Hurghada is now one of the country's main tourist centers located in the Red Sea coast. This city was founded in the early 20th century. For many decades, it was just a small fishing village, but it has grown into a major Red Sea resort beginning in the 1980s. This souvenir show Nefertiti. The picture on the decorative plate, the cosmetic bag, the necklace, and also this bracelet have the face of Nefertiti. She was a queen of the 18th dynasty of ancient Egypt, the great royal wife of Pharaoh Akhenaten. She and her husband were known as a religious revolution in which they worshipped one god only, Aten. With her husband, she reigned during the wealthiest period of ancient Egyptian history. Many scholars believe that Nefertiti also ruled as pharaoh after her husband's death. I've never been to Egypt, but I saw the original Nefertiti bust at the Egyptian Museum of Berlin. This bust is one of the most copied works of ancient Egypt. This necklace has hieroglyphs on it. I have no idea what's written here, but it looks nice. These are pictures drawn on the papyrus. 
Papyrus was first used in Egypt as a writing surface because there was plenty of the papyrus plants across the Nile Delta. It was made from the pith of the plant and its material is similar to thick paper. This is the Sphinx. And this is Tutankhamun, a pharaoh of the 18th dynasty. He started to reign when he was nine years old and he died very young at 19. So he is known as the boy king. This one shows the biblical story. King Herod orders to kill all the male children, two years old and under, in the vicinity of Bethlehem, hoping to kill the king of Jews. But an angel appeared to Joseph in a dream, telling him to flee to Egypt with Mary and the infant Jesus. So the family fled to Egypt, and Jesus could survive the massacre of the innocents. You can find the original of this picture in the tomb of Inokau. A blind harpist sings to the chief workman, Inokau, and his wife, Wap. And this is the famous judgment scene from the Book of Death. The jackal-headed Anubis, who is the god of death, mummification, embalming, the afterlife, cemeteries, tombs and the underworld in ancient Egyptian religion brings the dead man Hunifer to the scale of mad. Hunifer's heart is weighed on the scale against the feather of truth by Anubis. The ibis-headed Thoth, scribe of the gods, writes the result. If the heart equals exactly the weight of the feather, the man is allowed to pass into the afterlife. If not, he is eaten by the waiting chimeric creature Amit, composed of the deadly crocodile, lion, and hippopotamus. Hunifer has passed the test and is presented by the falcon headed Horus to Osiris, seated in his shrine with Isis and Nephthys. Also in this picture, Anubis is weighing the heart, and Thoth is writing the result. This is the deceased, and this is Ra, the god of the sun, order, kings, and the sky. And these are Mena and his wife in a bark. The deceased are taken to Abydos in the Abydos pilgrimage. Mena was a scribe and carried a number of titles associated with the agricultural estates of the temple of Karnak and the pharaoh. This is actually a wall painting in the tomb of Mena. Many ancient Egyptian gods are seen holding this ankh, the key of life. It is also known as the Egyptian cross. Anks are viewed as protective symbol. I have two paintings on papyrus which I couldn't find out what they are. One of them is this one. This is so big and beautiful, but I couldn't figure out what it is. Um, I can just guess that the gods are holding the earth where the people are living with the animals. I don't know. And the other one is also a big one. This looks like a pharaonic sailor ship. Probably it's one of the wall paintings in a temple in Egypt, but I couldn't figure it out. But it looks awesome. Now I will show you my cooking video. I've never had chance to eat Egyptian food, so I couldn't imagine how it would taste. Let's figure it out together. I made the Egyptian fatah in this Egyptian apron. See you in the kitchen. Thank you.
The fata was really good. Normally people mix the rice with the thin noodles, but I didn't have that kind of noodles at home, so I left them out. But still, it was really good. Thank you for watching this video and see you next Friday. Bye-bye.